Okay, for the transmission fluid, I ended up buying um, some decent synthetic fluid. Now, I know I said I only use Toyota fluid, and what I didn't realize, um, and I really hope I didn't ruin my transmission doing this, but there's really one, this whole box just for one, one container. Um, that's a little ridiculous. Anyway, I ordered 16 of these. The box underneath apparently has 15, and they just have one in this box, but anyway, got the Redline D4, had a lot of good reviews on this. Uh, wasn't cheap. I think it was, uh, I ended up paying like around $10 uh, a quart, so definitely wasn't cheap. But, um, hopefully it does, uh, it does the job. The uh, type the T5 or T4 whatever that is T1V um, transmission uh, fluid that I did use uh, I looked at the TSB a technical service bulletin for fluids that you can use for your uh, car mine calls for Dextron uh, 2 or 3 and for that type of transmission you can't use the type 5 or the type uh, TIV um, fluid um, so hopefully I didn't do any damage to the transmission or anything. It's still running okay, but uh, I'm going to go ahead and change it out. Un unless, I know a lot of people, I've, I've seen a lot of reviews and a lot of comments online that it's perfectly fine, but until I see a t uh, bulletin or something from Toyota saying that it's fine, I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch to synthetic and use, this is uh, for Dextron, a replacement for Dextron or whatever. It says it's compatible with Dextron 2 and 3. So that's why I'm going to be doing this flush. Okay, the other thing I got is the transmission cooler uh, flush. Um, cool clean uh, flush so I can clean it out. Uh, I'm not sure if it's dirty, but uh, it doesn't hurt now that it's, it's going to be all apart. <clears throat> okay, so no matter how prepared you think you are, um, I guess there's like three three things that happen. You have everything that you think you need um, and you end up using everything you need. You have some extra things that you thought you needed but you didn't need. But what really sucks and what makes the uh, DIYers a DIYer is the things that you need that you didn't think you needed and you have to go back out to the store at 2 o'clock in the morning to try to get it. I think I have everything I need. Um, I got a hand pump, a container for the fluid. I have 16 quarts of the Redline uh, D4 automatic trans transmission fluid. Uh, this right here, what I'm planning on doing is a radiator replacement, which I have the radiator as well. Uh, cool, uh, automatic transmission fluid uh, exchange. Anyway, so we're, right now we're going to try doing a transmission exchange, fluid exchange. These are the two lines that go to the transmission cooler. Um, they also co they come, and I, I don't know if any if I'll, if everybody understands this, but your radiator uh, has. Sorry, let me get out of the wind here. Your radiator has transmission lines on the bottom of it um, and that those the transmission line coming from the transmission goes into the uh, the transmission supply line goes into the radiators transmission line at the bottom comes out of the radiator transmission line comes over into the cooler comes out of the cooler and then goes back to the transmission um, that's how it works so it's sort of like a pre-cooling and then final cooling. A pre-cooling using the radiator and then a final cooling using the uh, um, the transmission cooler. And then it goes, the return line goes back to the transmission. So um, right now I'm going to drop, I'm going to go ahead and drop the, uh, the pan, the bottom skid plate. You can see I have new bolts there because I uh, 
replaced all the bolts. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and drop that. We're gonna drop the plastic shroud up behind it as well. Um, this way we'll have access to everything. Um, not that we need it particularly, but I'm gonna be doing the alternator soon, so I want access. And just getting to the, uh, the, the um, radiator hoses and everything, it makes it a lot easier. So we'll be doing on undoing these. I've done it uh, a bunch of times, so it's sort of uh, not a big deal for me. But anyway, um, I'll do that, and oh, that's better. Um, so I'll take I'll take those out and uh, drop this, and then we'll we'll move on. Okay, so I got the uh, the plate off the, the bottom. And I'm pretty sure this upper hose is for the uh, uh, is the supply line. And if I trace it back, that supply line goes underneath, comes around, and connects to right uh, here. Sorry, right here. So this is where it's going up to the upper part of the radiator um, hose. This rear one is sorry these are the two lines right here um, so this this lower one right here is what's going there's a lot of hoses down here so it's hard to tell what's what but this one right here these two lines if you can see they go back come on focus those two lines right there these two go back to the uh, radiators. So, so this one is supply. The one on the right is supply, and this one's return. So supply, return. Um, so that supply line goes down and connects to the radiator, like I was saying. So what I'm going to do, well, what I think I'm going to do is it's going through the radiator and coming out of this end. So I think I'm going to take this off, connect the fitting onto here, and uh, dump it out into here. Only because I think that'd be a little less messy and might give me a little more control. Actually, you know what, now that I'm thinking about it, I think I'm just going to take off that line. I'm going to take that line off, put it into this bucket. Um, I'm going to start the car for a second. Uh, and then shut it off and see if any fluid comes out. All right, so let's take that line off. Looks like these uh, clips are a little bit rusty too. Okay, got the uh, clip moved over. Now all, all there is left to do is just got it off. There we go. There we go. We're draining it out now. We're draining out whatever's left in the radiator. Um, not a lot. And then it's pouring out of here. You can see it's pouring out of there. So what I'm gonna do is remote start the car and see if any fluid comes out of this thing. Um, once I get to like two quarts I'm going to shut it off and add more fluid. Um, I'm going to do it two quarts at a time. After reading everything people say you can let it spit out a little bit or whatever. I don't want to run this thing dry so I'm going to do it this method. You can do whichever method you want but I feel like this might be the safest. So here goes nothing. Sort of. Uh, I've seen a lot. I've seen everybody do this, so I'm not too nervous, but I am still a little nervous. Okay, here we go. Okay poured a little bit out there. It's still dripping. It's 
Sorry, I got nervous. I shouldn't have shut it off so quick. But uh, that was a lot at once, and I don't want this thing to run dry, like I said. So um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and add, start adding some fluid. Okay, I had it on for, uh, uh, I'll check the camera time for how long I had it on, but I wanna see how many, uh, how many quarts. I'm thinking it's probably just about a quart. Let's see. Actually, it might not even be a full quart. Okay, that's about three fourths of a quart. So we got three fourths of a quart, and um, when I turned it on in about maybe five or six seconds, um, and then I shut it off, we got three fourths of a quart. So I'm gonna say like ten, uh, nine or ten seconds a quart, maybe even less than that. Um, So you gotta be really careful when you're doing this. You don't wanna uh, not be prepared to shut it off or anything and you'll run dry really quickly. Again, I don't know if it's bad for the transmission or not, but I don't wanna take any chances. So now what I'm gonna do next is I'm gonna drain the, uh, I'm gonna disconnect the uh, uh, trans cooler lines. Um, disconnect those two lines. Um, this one is the one that's going back to the transmission. So I'm gonna connect the hose to that and fill that hose up with transmission fluid and hold it up kind of high, sort of gravity feed it down when I turn the turn it on. So we'll see what happens. Okay, so I got the other hose off. I got this hose uh, pretty tightly on there, um, just a pressure fit. Didn't put any hose clamps. Got this on here. Again, that's just a pressure fit too. I don't think that's gonna come off, but uh, I'm not sure. Hopefully it doesn't. Should have used that funnel for this one, but I didn't. Uh, maybe I will do that actually. Yeah, let me let me swap these out. Okay, what I'm going to do is add uh, about three fourths of a quart um, to the dipstick. Uh, and then I'm gonna go ahead and fill this line up um, with fluid and see if it returns it when I start the car again. All right, now I'm just using this super tight crap just so I can uh, uh, flush it. I'm not really gonna fill it with this. I just wanna see if this will work. Okay, so far it's staying in the funnel, it's not going down. Well, let's see what happens when I start the car. Actually, it is starting to go down. Yeah, it's starting to go down. So let's see what happens uh, when I start the car. We should have, uh, should have the old stuff coming out, new stuff going in. Let's see. It's definitely going down the funnel though. I wonder if I should add some more in there. Alright, let's see. Sucked in that, uh, that transmission fluid right there. Suck that back. Let's see how much we uh, 
So it is, uh, it is sucking, sucking down. So I'll basically blow the cord here, start it till it sucks it back, and then start again. And that's the way we'll do it. So I basically added, make sure you keep track of this, I added one, a full cord of this, and I just dumped about, let's see how much I've done. It's a slow process, but I kind of feel comfortable doing it this way. Way more comfortable than I, than I did doing it the other way. Uh, letting it all dump out. Having a remote start is pretty nice for this, uh, this sole purpose. Let's see how much fluid we got. Fluid doesn't look terrible, actually, but um, I just don't like having the wrong type of fluid. And I don't know if it's really the wrong type or what the deal is, but uh, better safe than sorry. And I think we got a lot more than a quart here. Yeah, that's about. This is pretty much a quart right here. So we got about two quarts out this time. I wish I had a container that could hold more. If you guys are at home doing this, get a container that has a graduation so you don't need to do it like this. But unfortunately, I used this thing. It was only five bucks at Walmart, so it wasn't a, a huge expense. But hindsight, I would have got something that could hold more and had graduations on it. So, so far, we took, we added three, four, we added one quart. And we took out two quarts so far. So that one quart we added, a little bit more than double came out. Because what I'm trying to do is get rid of all the old stuff before I start putting the new stuff in. I don't mind going through this process a couple times, but I don't want to run out of the good stuff before I'm out of the, before the old fluid's out. I don't see any leaks anywhere, so it's definitely going back to the transmission. It's not like I have the wrong line or anything. But I have the uh, other line disconnected, so it would just pour out. Go ahead and start her up. Spit the fluid. Keep drawing, keep drawing some out. It's not really sucking. I think this is just. I think this line just goes back to the. Uh, uh, so you can fill it from the dipstick. I thought this might have been sucking, but it doesn't really do anything. It just, it just goes back to the dipstick. It goes back to the basically the uh, inlet. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fill all these up. We should have uh, whatever came out. I added. Added an extra one and a little bit of quartz. So, I'll probably write this down. <coughs> yeah, but do you think with all the rest of the Alright, so what I realized is this line. Uh, this return line actually goes right back to the transmission pan um, So it's the same thing as filling it from over there um, But anyway, I'm just gonna keep filling it through there because it's working and it is what it is uh, It's actually easier than trying to do it from there for right now um, So the what I noticed is what's coming out is a lot faster than what's going in um, so Obviously since there's nothing forcing it in so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna measure how much came out measure how much I put back in just so I don't over overfill it or underfill it or whatever uh, and then we're just gonna keep going uh, I'm gonna do two quarts at a time and just keep keep progressing so I'm gonna see how much just came out uh, it's very easy to want to just there it is, my pocket. it's 
very easy to just want to do it all at uh, at once and just let it all dump out. But I, I don't know. I just, I wouldn't do it. See the color is pretty uh, dark. It's supposed to be a, a bright red, so it's good that we're doing this. It's actually not as bad as uh, I thought. This just means that it needs to be changed. Not that there's anything wrong. It's good. So once, okay, this is gonna make it 4.3. Yep, call it five and a half. Even. All right, so five and a half came out. We put back in four, and now I'm gonna put in an extra quart. All right, so I put an extra quart uh, in. So I filled these up with the used fluid. So we got five quarts out, and that one back there is new. I added that, that's empty. It's inside the engine now, or inside the transmission. Um, and I'm gonna go ahead and start it up. Uh, I might actually add another quart while I'm uh, letting it run real quick, so this way uh, I can let it run for a little bit longer. So I'll put this back onto the... Uh... I'm going to go ahead and start her up. Okay, so that's how much we drained out, and so we we put in uh, three quarts, and we drained out this much. Let's see how much we have. Okay, uh, since the food's coming out so quick, uh, what I'm doing now is filling up a little overfill. Uh, I'm filling up a little bit over what a, uh, it's, I mean, it's at low right now, so going up to, uh, go, adding like an extra quart or something might be all right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill it up a little bit more. Um, I just added an extra quart. Uh, it drains really fast. Uh, it's, the fluid's starting to get a little bit clearer. I know there, it's mixing in there, it's got to be, but uh, again, I don't want to... I don't want to run the transmission dry, so it's just the way I got to do it. All right, so we're going to start her up, and uh, I'm going to let her run for a little bit, see what she does. I actually might um, um, connect the lines up and shift through the gears for a little bit, and then put her back into park and do this again. Okay, before I go ahead and connect the lines and just run through the gears real quick, what I, what I did was I connected, uh, let's see, connected the hose to the uh, radiator portion. And I'm gonna back flush using this pump. I'm gonna back flush through the radiator and through the um, cooler line and out of the cooler line out of that line that's facing, I put a C-clamp on it. Not, it's very loose, so it's still, hose is still open. It's gonna pour out into the bucket there. It's aimed down uh, to pour out into the bucket. So, 
go ahead and uh, I'm going to use the rest of the uh, crap. Well, I shouldn't say crap because some people, you can actually use this stuff. It's not bad. Probably is the same stuff that, well, uh, maybe not the same stuff, but it's, it'll be just fine if you're changing your fluids often enough. So I shouldn't diss on it, but um, it's really cheap, so it kind of makes me nervous. Anyway, um, I'm going to go ahead and stick that in there and start back feeding this through the, uh, I don't know if you can see, see it's getting pumped out over oh, there, it's coming out. So, hopefully I'm angled right. Yeah, there you go. Feeding this new, new fluid. A really good way to clean the uh, transmission cooler. It's all the crap that came out of the cooler. I mean, that's, some of that's new stuff, but a lot of it's the old stuff. So, pretty nasty stuff coming out. And this is this is flushing in the direction of flow, so um, if you want to really clean this stuff out, you would back flush it, um, which actually I might do. Um, but anyway, I'll do that uh, after I'm done putting the new radiator in, I'll back flush the uh, dry cooler. But for now, pretty good. I um, think I'm going to go ahead. So that's the nasty stuff mixed with the good stuff. So you got to remember there's some good stuff in here too. Um, so it just tells you how nasty it is since it looks pretty bad. Uh, anyway, that's the, uh, that's how you back, uh, flush out the dry cooler. Uh, I'm gonna. I have the dry cooler cleaner stuff, so I'm gonna use that as well. But for now, that's uh, that's what I'll do, just to run it for a little bit. I don't want to. I don't want to run that new, the new fluid. Um, I don't want to run this old fluid back into the transmission. That's not effective. Okay, I got uh, three quarts left. Fluid's looking pretty good. So what I'm gonna do is start the car for a second. Just get the. Uh, fluid to come out a little bit and then check it um, and if it looks good then we'll we're done if it doesn't we're still done because I don't have any more uh, fluid left so I'm gonna clean out I'm gonna clean this out so I don't have anything left so I can see what color the actual new fluid is and we'll compare it to a bottle of the old stuff okay new uh, I mean pan, uh, it's been cleaned up um, we got an extra quart in there that I put in already. Check the dipstick. So we're going to start her up for a sec and then see what color fluid is. Oh, it looks pretty healthy. It's pretty healthy to me. It looks really red. That's exactly what we want to see. Nice clean fluid. Um, so that's it. Now we now we have nice clean fluid. I have plenty of fluid left so I can fill it. That's why I need to go a little bit over um, so you get most of it out. I'm gonna shift through the gears once I put the new, I have to put the new uh, radiator in first. So, okay, so I gotta put the new uh, radiator in and then I'll get back to the rest of this and I also have to flush out the dry cooler. But let's see what we got here. Oh yeah, look at that. See that? That's what you want to see. Um, 
I don't even think I need to do a comparison of what it looked like before, but let me uh, let me just show you guys. Sorry about the, the wobbly camera. I'm trying to do this in one day because I'm going to be in the city for the weekend. Anyway, here's a... I'm dumping out the new fluid. I'm going to put some old fluid in here so you can see the difference. It's a good feeling when you got clean transmission fluid. Okay, so you saw the old stuff. I mean, you saw the new stuff uh, just come out. Now I'm going to pour in some of the old stuff. Look at that. Are you, you guys see that? It's a huge difference. Um, it goes dark right away, so you know it's been a little bit, a little bit burnt. Um, so it's definitely, it was definitely good to do this. So now I have full synthetic. Um, I'm gonna go ahead put the new radiator in. We'll go through that. I'll probably do two separate videos, one for the radiator, one for this. Um, but I need to do that next. All right. Okay, I uh, hooked up the. I just pushed it in there, right? like a pressure fit. Um, hooked it up to the can. Uh, had to clamp down on the uh, top of the can. The hose for the can is inside here. Uh, I just cut the end off and just stuck it in. And zip tied it all the way to the top. Let me see if this, uh, this holds. Going in that way, so I'm going back out. 